Hey everybody, today I want to talk about this Beatles box set. This is the remix and remaster of the Red and the Blue albums. This was done by Giles Martin back in uh, 2023, so last year. And uh, when this came out, I gotta say, I wasn't all that excited about it. And for me, that was a new thing because with all the previous Beatles box sets, like starting with the Sgt. Pepper Deluxe Edition in 2017, um, I was so excited for that box set to come out and I couldn't wait. Uh, to get it in the mail and just like dive into it and listen to every single second of it and like look at all the booklets and everything. And that continued with all of the box sets, the White Album, Abbey Road, Let It Be, Revolver, etc. Uh, but when this one was announced and when it came out, I didn't have that same feeling. And it's funny, that feeling, um, it's remained that way for me. I, I still am not all that excited about this, uh, but I have taking the time to listen to every single thing on this multiple times. And uh, I've listened to the streaming versions, but I've also pretty much devoted most of my time to just listening to this vinyl edition of uh, this release. So everything I say in this video, I'm gonna be talking, referring to this exact box set right here. So like I said, this was released in uh, last year in 2023, and most of the songs on here were remixed using the um, the demix technology known as Mal, uh, and this was created by Peter Jackson and his team, um, and it was used extensively on the Beatles' Get Back film that I just absolutely loved and so many people loved. Uh, it was used on that, and it was also used on the Beatles' Revolver box set that came out um, in 2022. So they used it again on uh, a lot of these songs, um, but. The one thing that you should uh, know about this, uh, the Red and the Blue albums, is that a lot of the songs on the Blue album especially, they use just the remixes that Giles Martin had already done for the Super Deluxe Edition uh, box sets. So like all the Sgt. Pepper songs, all the songs from uh, Abbey Road and Let It Be, and uh, Revolver as well, they all feature those uh, remixes that were already done for those box sets. So you're not getting anything new as far as like an, an additional remix for something like uh, Strawberry Fields or Penny Lane or even, um, you know, like uh, something or something like that. So that was a little bit of a bummer, I gotta say, because I would have liked to just have everything in this box set remixed and done uh, to be totally fresh and new. But I guess they already had those mixes uh, in, in the can, so they might as well just use those. Um, but. The Red Album now, the Red Album has, I would say 80% of it, it's all brand new uh, remixes. So let's dive right into this. Um, for me, it was like 50-50 in the sense of, there was about 50% of this that I really liked as far as new remixes go, and there's about 50% that I really don't like. Uh, and unfortunately, when I first listened to this all the way through, I kind of was left with a bad feeling. Um, because the moments that I didn't like really just kind of stuck with me as like, it just felt like, oh no, this is how this, this song is going to be presented from now on. Um, but that being said, let's jump right into it here. And uh, first let's talk about the packaging. Now, I really like the way this looks. I know a lot of people um, were kind of critical of it when it first came out, but I think it's really clean and looks nice. I like the way the Beatles logo is, uh, got the shiny kind of metallic look to it. And I like the white background with the red and the blue albums. Uh, and then I like the back with the red track listing and the blue track listing in the appropriate colors. And the spine looks cool. And I gotta say, the records, uh, they fit really, really nicely in there. So, let's first talk about the red album. I should also mention that I wish they would have made these um, jackets with a, uh, a glossy a glossy finish like they did for the 2014 um, all analog uh, remasters that they did, which I think are excellent. I have a video for that, link down below. Um, but I wish they would have done that glossy finish that the original UK pressings had. But for this, they didn't really do that. They just did this kind of, it still looks nice and it's really nice and clean, but it's kind of like matte finish, I guess is what you would call it. Other small complaint before I jump into uh, what I think of the actual remixes, um, they shoved three records into a uh, double album sleeve. So you're kind of, you're, they, you're kind of uh, jam-packed in the uh, second half of this. So you got record two and three 
kind of shoved in there like that. And I don't really like that all that much, but just a small complaint. Okay, let's jump into track by track. Here we go. So the first song, Love Me Do. Um, so this is the single version of Love Me Do that was only ever available in mono. But now with this demix technology, they were able to, uh, they were able to take um, an original, uh, I think it was an original UK pressing of the single uh, and put, transfer that over to a, a digital source and then demix it and remix it for this collection. And I gotta say, I think it's really fantastic. It sounds really good to my ears and I was really, really impressed with it because I was kind of worried at first. And for those who don't know, by the way, the original, um, the original master tape for the single version of Let Me Do with Ringo on drums has long been either lost or taped over or thrown away or whatever. So it doesn't exist anymore. The only, um, the best quality they have of it are early UK pressings of the single with Love Me Do uh, um, with Ringo on drums. So that's where they got the source for this version of Love Me Do that they did, did the demixing technology on. Uh, and like I said, it sounds great. And I was a little worried because they were getting it from a, uh, an early uh, 45 pressing, but it really, really sounds good. And you can hear so many great things in there that you couldn't really hear before. Like uh, the acoustic guitar really sounds good. The harmonica sounds good. The vocals are excellent. Uh, and Ringo's drumming is great too. So I think it really, really uh, enhanced this version of Love Me Do. Uh, and also this version of Love Me Do it also is the B-side of the new Beatles song, Now and Then. So I had heard this previously to getting this uh, box set, but excellent, excellent, let me do. The next song on here is Please Please Me, and I don't like it as much as I like Love Me Do, but I do like this new mix. Um, it, it definitely gives the song more clarity, I would say, but it's lacking a little bit of excitement, if that makes any sense. Uh, I don't know if that's because now that everything's kind of separated, it's separated too much, and that original, um, the original mix that we're so used to hearing that had so much energy in it, if that magic is kind of missing now, um, but there just seems to be a little something off with it. That being said, I still think it's a, it's a successful remix, and I think it's the best they probably could have done with what they have, so I, I, I generally liked that remix of Please Please Me. Uh, and then the next song I gotta kind of peek in here to see what we're up to is From Me To You. Now From Me To You has been remixed before. Uh, it's actually a, a number of times, uh, but the most recent remix of From Me To You was on the Beatles One album, and this was done in 2015, uh, and Giles Martin again was the one who did this remix. And I think that remix is really, really good as well. But I think the one here now is a little bit better than that 2015 mix. Uh, it just seems like everything has a little bit more clarity. The vocals are very, very strong. And overall, I really, really liked it. So For Me To You is definitely a win on this album. Um, next up is She Loves You. Okay, this is the first travesty of the remixes. I was so looking forward to hearing a real stereo version of She Loves You, an officially released stereo version of, Lo of She Loves You. I should mention a little side note that a lot of people, um, this is about three or four years ago, online have been just doing it themselves, have been remixing the mono version of She Loves You into stereo, just on their own and port posting it on Beatle forums. So I've heard a lot of those attempts. A lot of those are very, very good. Most of them are actually better than the version on this album right here. Um, that being said, I'm not gonna talk about those because those are not official. So we're talking about this one that is an official release. So this is officially the first time that She Loves You has ever been um, remixed for stereo because like Love Me Do, the master tape of She Loves You has long been uh, lost, uh, thrown away, erased, whatever. It's not available. So again, for this, they used apparently uh, an early um, UK pressing of She Loves You, the mono mix, and that's what they used to do the demixing and to remix it for stereo. Unfortunately, this version of She Loves You kind of sounds like how I imagined Love Me Do was going to sound, except it sounds really, really poor on here. And what I, what I think the reason, why I think the reason it sounds so poor is, it seems like all the high end has been kind of messed with. It's kind of been taken away. Uh, and I think the reason that they've done that is because famously on this version, of, on this 
version, this is the only version, on this, uh, um, on She Loves You, there was a ton of edits done on this song. And you could hear, you know, in the original mono version, you could hear the edits where the symbols, the right symbol kind of, the sound changes a little bit. So I think they were trying to mask that with this remix. Uh, and in doing so, they just totally took away all the high end and it sounds just artificial to me. Um, also, as far as the, the stereo uh, image, it's like, it's not really that much of a stereo image other than it seems like one of the guitars is now to the side. It really, it just seems like a totally missed opportunity. Uh, and if this was the best they could do, they should have just put it out in mono and not tried to do a stereo version. So that definitely left a bad taste in my mouth, this version of She Loves You. I do not like it at all. It, it ruins the experience of listening to that amazing song. Next up is kind of interesting. It's I Wanna Hold Your Hand, and I think it's one of my favorite uh, remixes on this Red album. It's so funny that you hear She Loves You, which is my one of my, probably my least favorite of the remixes, and then the next one is my favorite. I don't know if that's because after hearing She Loves You, which was so poor, Hearing I Want to Hold Your Hand, it's almost like a breath of fresh air and it sounds like so good. Um, I guess you could kind of like equate that to like if you were like doing a taste test of something and they, someone gave you like, here, here's a horrible tasting um, apple and you tasted it and it was bad, really bitter or whatever. And then they gave you like the best honey crisp in the world and you took a bite of that. It will taste even better than it really would because you just had a really bad bite. That's kind of like She Loves You with I Want to Hold Your Hand. But like I said, I Wanna Hold Your Hand is excellent on here. This remix is great, uh, and it really is so punchy, and it's just so much electricity going on. It is my new favorite version of I Wanna Hold Your Hand, in stereo at least. Uh, next up is All My Lovin'. This is another one that I was really looking forward to hearing a remix, uh, a stereo remix of this, and I gotta say, it, it kind of was a little flat for me. Um, it's not bad in any way. Uh, there's nothing really horrible about the remix. It just doesn't have that magic that's present in the mono, uh, the original mono mix or the original uh, stereo mix. Um, and I just can't really put my finger on it. It's just missing something and I, I don't quite know what it is, but that's just how I feel about all my loving. Can't buy me love. Um, this has been remixed a couple of times before as well, especially on the Beatles one album in 2015. And this is an improvement over that original mix. I will say I really enjoyed listening to, listening to this new remix of Can't Buy Me Love. Um, Can't Buy Me Love is a song that I've just over time, I've heard it so much now that it's kind of, I'm kind of desensitized to it. But listening to this new remix, it made me appreciate the song again, just the recording quality of it. Uh, it's really, uh, the Beatles, really really are rocking on it and uh, I love George's uh, guitar solo break and I love the fact that they kept the other guitar solo that's in the background uh, so when they originally recorded the song they recorded the backing track in Paris France uh, and when they recorded that George did a solo at that time on the backing track then when they got back to uh, to London to Abbey Road um, he overdubbed another guitar solo and that original solo is still in there because it's bleeding through on the original backing track with the drums and the bass and the rhythm guitar. So you can still hear it. Uh, now with the D-Mix technology, they probably could have taken that, um, that solo out, but they left it in there in the background because it's such a part of the song. And I'm really glad they did because it's, it's excellent. And you can even hear it a little bit better on this D-Mix, which I really think is cool. So Can't Buy Me Love, excellent. Now, um, on to side two, and also a little side note, you might be thinking to yourself, I think he's going out of order. Well, the, uh, the digital release of these new remixed uh, Red and Blue albums, uh, it puts the songs in chronological order, even the bonus tracks that are on here. Uh, the vinyl version uh, keeps the original vinyl running order intact. So uh, all the bonus tracks are on the third LP of each of the Red and the Blue albums. So that's why if you're following along, um, it might be a little out of order because the order of the vinyl and the CD and digital is different. So on to uh, the next song, which is the first song on side two of the first record. It's A Hard Day's Night. And this one is excellent uh, in my book. The opening chord is now in stereo, which I think is really, really cool. And uh, just overall the song, it really, really rocks and it benefits from this new mix, I think. Uh, excellent, excellent mix, one of my favorites. Next up, And I Love Her, another one that sounds really, really good. 
Uh, the acoustic guitars are just really, really beautiful, and George's solo it really, really just has so much clarity to it, uh, and it's really nice to hear it uh, in this remix version as well. So, excellent, excellent version of Anna Love Her. Eight Days a Week. This is um, one that, when I first heard it, I didn't like this new uh, remix of it, but the more I listened to it, the more I've appreciated it. Um, I still think I prefer the original stereo mix of this song, but on this new, new remix version, um, they really took a lot of liberty, I would say, as far as like the actual stereo image of the song. Um, it's really kind of spread out, kind of wide, and at times it sounds a little weird to me, but um, I do like that you can hear so much more within the song. So, Eight Days a Week was a little bit hit or miss for me, and I think over time I've learned to like it. So, I'll say that I'm happy that it's here with the remixed version, but I'll probably always go back to my original uh, either mono or stereo versions of Eight Days a Week. Next up, Ticket to Ride. Ticket to Ride, again, is another song. Or actually, I think I skipped I Feel Fine. Yep, I did skip I Feel Fine. I Feel Fine is like Ticket to Ride, is a song that's been remixed before on the Beatles 1 album, like I keep talking about, in 2015 by Giles Martin. And again, the version on, uh, on here, of this 2023 uh, edition, it sounds really good to my ears. Uh, I still don't like it as much as the original stereo mix or the original uh, mono mix, but it sounds fine. It definitely has a lot of clarity. Uh, and overall, and I think the other thing about uh, I Feel Fine, it seems that they took away um, some of the uh, the intro where you could hear like uh, a lot of like kind of like whispering or something like that. I could be wrong, but I think when I listened to this that it, it was missing. Let me know in the comments below if that's incorrect, but I think it is missing or at least part of it's missing, um, which I don't like. Ticket to Ride. Pretty much similar to I Feel Fine as far as how I feel about it. There was a 2015 remix, uh, which I thought was pretty good. Uh, and on this, it doesn't seem all that different from that remix. Uh, I think maybe on here, it's got a little bit more drums. The drums might have a little bit more clarity, which is a good thing. Uh, and overall, I think I liked it. So we'll just kind of leave that one alone for a while. Uh, yesterday. This was a huge, huge improvement, I think. Uh, the string quartet is now in stereo, which sounds amazing. Paul's vocal and the guitar sound really, really crystal clear as well. Uh, and overall, I think it's an improvement. Again, this is a song that was on the Beatles' one album, so it was remixed for that. But the string quartet wasn't in stereo, and it is now, and it's really, really beautiful. Definitely a standout moment for me uh, on this Red album. Okay, next up, the song Help. Um, Again, it's been remixed before. Uh, on here though, I think it's a little bit better. It has a little bit of an edge. I like John's vocal on here. It's really, really out front. Uh, I love the electric guitar that George plays. Overall, excellent, excellent uh, remix done for help. Same with You've Got to Hide Your Love Away. Um, it's kind of a simple recording in the sense uh, that it's just acoustic guitars and a little bit of percussion and vocals. And I think bass is in there as well. Um, but it really stands out. I think most, that is actually true for most of the remixes on here that are like the acoustic songs. They really benefited from the remix. I think just because the clarity of the acoustics um, with modern technology, they're really able to make the acoustics sound a lot more, uh, have a lot more warmth and a lot more clarity overall. So You Got Hydro Love Way is really, really nice. And the flutes that come in at the end are very, very nice. So definitely a nice remix uh, of that song on here. We can work it out. Um, this was another one that was a little bit puzzling to me. Uh, the low end on here is just totally overblown, at least on this vinyl pressing. Uh, it almost felt like you're listening to all the songs and the bass is, is pretty pretty reasonable. All of a sudden, We Can Work It Out comes on and it's like, there's just like, it's way too modern of a bass sound. It's like super sub frequencies going on and it just didn't sit well with me at all. It kind of ruined the song for me. Um, I then went back and kind of adjusted my stereo a little bit, and then I appreciated the remix a little bit more after I took some bass away, because then I could hear some other stuff going on. Uh, but overall, first impression, I just didn't really like the remix because of, of, of the overblown bass. Uh, I know a lot of people have said they really like this remix of We Can Work It Out. I don't know if maybe they're not listening on a, a system that has 
um, a lot of low end or whatever, which is totally fine. If they're enjoying it on what they have, that's, that's great. For me personally, and maybe it's just a flaw with my room or my stereo, that is definitely possible, but it seemed like the low end, a certain frequency was just going absolutely bonkers. Um, so I didn't really enjoy that remix uh, of We Can Work It Out. Day Tripper. Now, this is another highlight, in my opinion. This has really, really benefited from this remix. Uh, and I've, I've never had a problem with Day Tripper before. Uh, I love the original mono mix. I love the original uh, stereo mix. I love the remix that was done in 2015. But actually, I even love the original. When the, when the first one album came out, I think in 2000, they did do like a repair, you know, of that one note that drops out of the guitar lick. Uh, I think it's after the uh, guitar solo. There's like the main riff. There is one note that like got messed up on the tape or something and it always used to drop out. They fixed it on there. I even kind of like that. This new remix is definitely my favorite now. It really, really absolutely just rocks so hard. The drums are so in your face. The bass is excellent. The guitars are just totally electric and just wonderful. It's so, so good. Definitely one of the highlights uh, on the Red Album as well, Day Tripper. Uh, Drive My Car. So now, now we're getting into the Rubber Soul songs. And I gotta say, all the Rubber Soul songs are really, really nice and they make me look, look forward to or hope or really long for a Rubber Soul Super Deluxe Edition. Uh, we need that because it's it would be next, I guess, in the order because they just did Revolver and I think they're working backwards now. Uh, so Rubber Soul would make sense to be the next Super Deluxe Edition. Uh, and if that's the case, and if these are the remixes that are going to be on there, they're going to be excellent. Uh, Drive My Car, it sounds really good. It's punchy. There's beautiful clarity. Uh, it doesn't lose the magic of a lot of the other mixes that we're used to. So I really, really like it. Uh, a lot on here. Norwegian Wood, again, it's an acoustics based song and it sounds really crystal clear, really warm, really, really nice, uh, and again from Rubber Soul, so it sounds great. Um, Nowhere Man, here is where we run into a little bit of a problem, and this is a problem that um, has, it starts to become more of an issue the further you get into the red album and the further you get into the blue album. Here's a problem where basically what's happening, and this is what a lot of people online pointed out at first, I heard something wrong with the drum track. I didn't know exactly what it was I was hearing, I just knew it wasn't right. And then I read some message boards and so people found this out. Also, I don't want to take credit for like I found this out, but I read about it and then once I read about it, it was like that is exactly what's going on. So the hi-hat part on Nowhere Man is out of sync with the other tracks. Now, if you don't really understand what's going on there, the best way I can describe this is when they're remixing these songs, they're, um, they're breaking the tracks down so you have a track that's, you know, just the hi-hat, just the snare drum, uh, just the bass guitar, whatever, so you can, you know, move the volume up for all that stuff individually and create a new mix. Um, but when you put these new tracks in, you have to have them all lined up so they all play, you know, uh, parallel to each other in sync. So they all, you know, work through the song. If, uh, if you've ever done any type of audio editing, uh, unlike, you know, there's programs called like Logic or Pro Tools or even like GarageBand or, or whatever. Um, if you move one of the WAV files, just even a fraction of a second, it will make everything, it'll, it'll just sound completely wrong. That's what happened here with Nowhere Man. The hi-hat is a little bit out of sync, and it's just a fraction, I don't know, maybe like a tenth of a second out of sync. But it's out of sync, and it's not right. That's not the way Ringo played it. But it's amazing that they let that mistake get through on Nowhere Man. Uh, I mean, that's a major, major mistake that they then, that got through however many people did the quality, quality control as far as listening. Uh, and it's just really kind of embarrassing is what I would say. Because this is, I mean, let's face it, this is the Beatles. This is a major, major release. And the fact that that got through is just kind of unbelievable. And the fact that that's not the only major mistake. We're going to be talking about more on the Blue Album. Uh, the big mistakes uh, that got through. It's just, it just seems kind of kind of crazy uh, when you think of the, the, the large scale of this, this release. So Nowhere Man is a little bit of a miss there. 
Other than that though, other than that out of sync uh, hi-hat part, which is a big deal, um, the rest of the remix is really, really nice. Uh, and I like what they did with the vocals. Uh, I hope they repair that little desync problem for the Rubber Soul Super Deluxe. I'm sure they will, uh, but it, it really is hard to, hard to believe. Next up, Michelle. Again, an acoustic guitar. I know I'm gonna repeat myself a lot, but this is a Rubber Soul song and it sounds just beautiful. I love this remix. Uh, just the sonic clarity of this song, beautiful. Really, really nice. So I highly recommend listening to that. And In My Life is the next song. And again, just a beautiful, beautiful job as far as the uh, remixing goes. It still has that magical quality that In My Life, this recording has always had. Um, and it really, this song, it's always been an amazing song, arguably probably one of the best Beatles songs. Uh, and it's even better now with this remix. So I really, really like In My Life, especially the drums. I've always loved the drums on that. The drums on In My Life, by the way, are very similar to the drums on uh, Anna. If you uh, go to Anna and listen to Anna and then go to the drums on In My Life, very, very similar what Ringo's doing, which I think it's called linear drumming, which is like you're only hitting, you're kind of only hitting one uh, thing at a time. Anyway, that's getting a little bit technical, but check it out, Anna in my life. Similar drumming. Next up, the absolute highlight of the whole collection for me. This is my favorite of the remixes. The song Girl from the Rubber Soul album. This is a uh, song written by John and Paul, but mainly it's John. John's voice on this will absolutely give you chills. When I first heard it, um, it took my breath away uh, and it made me feel a lot better um, about the bad moments that are on the blue and the red. Uh, it made me feel good about buying this box set. Girl is just so stunning. Uh, it's always been a stunning song, but it's even better on this remix. So I highly recommend checking out the remix of Girl on here. It's so, so nice. Uh, and moving on, gotta keep looking here. Okay, so the, the last three songs on side four are all songs that have been already remixed on uh, Revolver. You have Paperback Rider, Yellow Submarine, and Eleanor Rigby. Uh, and I've already talked about those remixes, so if you want to check, check out what I think about those, check out my Revolver Super Deluxe Edition video where I review that. Uh, next up, these are now the bonus songs on the Red Album. I saw her standing there. This is another highlight of the album. The drums and the clapping, the claps on here are just boosted unbelievably, but I think it's great. A lot of people complain that they maybe didn't like it too much. I think it's awesome. It shows just how electric this song is, uh, and it really, really, really sounds good if you turn it up and just blast it. It's amazing. It makes you remember that the Beatles were just arguably one of the best rock and roll bands ever, ever to play. I started standing there. Really, really nice on here. Next up, Twist and Shout. This sounds really good to me. Uh, I don't think it needed much improvement. The original mix of this, the mono and stereo, super great, electric. The one on here, uh, it's not all that different, I gotta say. Um, it, it, I guess the clarity is maybe a little bit better, uh, but it still sounds really electric and really nice. So overall, I like it, but it's nothing uh, mind-blowing at all. Uh, this boy. This is now the definitive version of this boy uh, on here. Uh, the vocals are just exquisite. The acoustic guitar sounds really, really nice. It rings. It's like it's almost like your ear is right in front of the guitar being strummed. Everything about this remix is really, really beautiful. So this boy, again, is another highlight on here. Roll over Beethoven. This was a little bit of an odd choice, in my opinion, to include this as a bonus track. Um, I love the recording of Roll of Beethoven that the Beatles do with George singing lead. I think it's a weird choice, though. Uh, there's other songs I would have maybe ha chosen over Roll of Beethoven, like It Won't Be Long is one song that comes to mind from that, that same album with the Beatles. Uh, that could have been a good choice for this. Even like I Want to Be Your Man would have been a little bit of a better choice than Roll Over Beethoven, just to give Ringo some more representation. And it's just such a good song and such a good recording. But Roll Over Beethoven is the song they chose, and this remix is very nice. It sounds very electric, very good. Um, and yeah, it's nothing amazing, but it's it's good. You really got a hold on me. 
much like Roland Beethoven, it's kind of an odd choice. Uh, I think I would have picked a couple of songs over that again, but this is the one they chose. And again, the remix, it sounds good. Uh, it does make me kind of long for uh, a remix with the Beatles album as well, like a super deluxe version, version of that. Uh, you can't do that. Sounds great on here. Um, it's nothing, no, not like a revelation or anything. It just sounds good is what I'll say. And overall, I was uh, happy to have a remix version of it. I think it's an interesting bonus track again to choose. Uh, it was the B-side of, I believe it was the B-side of, of Can't Buy Me Love. So I guess it kind of makes sense to put it on here. But again, I would have maybe picked another song to do instead of You Can't Do That. Uh, maybe like uh, Things We Said Today is a song that comes to mind from the Hard Day's Night album. That would have been maybe a cool inclusion on here. But oh well. And then If I Needed Someone, excellent choice, I think, for a bonus track. And it sounds amazing on here. I really, really like it again, a Rubber Soul song. So we can look forward to that on the Super Deluxe. And then the rest of the songs on here are from Revolver, so I won't go into them, but you got Got to Get My Life, I'm Only Sleeping, Taxman, Here, There, and Everywhere, and Tomorrow Never Knows. So that's the Red Album. The Blue Album is going to go a lot faster because, again, most of the songs on here have been already released, these remix versions. So I'm just going to talk about the songs that are new remixes. Um, so the new remixes on here are... Okay, so there's some debate about All You Need, All you need Is Love. Is it the version from 2015, the one album, or did they remix it? I don't really know. I, I looked online to see what the definitive answer was. There's conflicting um, posts about it. Some say it's the 2015 version. Some say it's been remixed. Let's just pretend that it's, the, it's remixed, I guess, on here. Um, from what I can hear, it sounds really good. Uh, I think the version on the Love album is actually... A better remix to my ears uh, and Giles Martin did that remix as well on the Love album so I think for me that's the one I kind of like tend to go to um, then next up we get Magical Mystery Tour songs remixed finally um, and unfortunately the first one on here I Am The Walrus is a huge huge uh, miss for me um, they completely remixed the song and made it it's almost like an alternate take of this song. Uh, the, it's just very weird is how I can describe it. It starts out pretty good, um, the remix. It seems like it's kind of, it's got a good rock and feel to it. But then when it gets to the sitting in English garden part where on the original stereo version, it goes to fake, fake stereo. Um, they, I don't know what they were thinking, but it just, it sonically goes into the garbage. It sounds really, really bad. And then um, the outro with all the, like, the King Lear from the BBC recordings, it all sounds completely different. Uh, and it's just hard to believe that this is the version that they let go out. Because it's, like I said, it's almost like an alternate take of I Am The Walrus. In fact, it is an alternate take. You're hearing different things that are not, that didn't exist before on the original version. So this is a big disappointment for me, I Am The Walrus. Uh, I just, I, I don't, I don't like this remixed version. Um, I guess if I, if I look at it like it's an alternate take, I guess I kind of like it, but it's not intended to be an alternate take. It's intended to be a new representation of the master. So just a big, big disappointment. I am the walrus. Hello, goodbye. Uh, I believe is the original version on 2000, the 2015 remixed version. I could be wrong, but I think that's what that is. Um, then we get to Fool on the Hill. This sounds amazing. It's no complaints. Really, really, really nice. Uh, but it's not all that different from the version that we're used to, but it sounds really, really good. Magical Mystery Tour. This was a highlight for me. The, there's a new, like, electric guitar going on. I think it's in the right channel that I never really either paid attention to before or was burying the mix, but now it's incredibly loud and it's awesome. I love it. Um, it's really, really nice. It makes the song such a rock song. Uh, it almost sounds like a White Album song now or something. I don't know. It, it's Normally I wouldn't like something like that, but with this, it really, really makes the song take off. So I love it on here. Uh, it's really, really cool. So listen for that guitar. Um, and then the other remix on here is, the new remix is of Revolution. 
This was a missed, missed opportunity in my opinion. Um, this song is just arguably one of the Beatles um, heaviest rock songs and it just kind of misses the mark on here for me. I don't know. I don't know what they could have done to make it better. It's not like there's any like glaring things that I can point out like this is why it's wrong. It just doesn't feel heavy to me uh, and I don't know what it is. There's just something a little weird about it. Let me know what you think about Revolution. Just it didn't do, do it for me on here. Um, then we have a bunch of White Album songs, which I won't get into, but we do have then, um, remixes of The Ballad of John Yoko and Old Brown Shoe. Now, I think The Ballad of John Yoko, maybe it's not a new remix, I could be wrong about that, but Old Brown Shoe, we'll talk about that. Old Brown Shoe is definitely a remix, and this is a travesty. They... They, meaning Giles Martin and his team, they remixed Old Brown Shoe and it sounds completely wrong to me. First of all, the vocal, George's vocal sounds really weird. I know he recorded it like not in the actual studio, he recorded like in the control room of EMI or something like that, one of the smaller rooms. And he wanted to have like that kind of different vocal sound, but it just sounds bizarre on this remix to me. It's, it doesn't work. It's not, it doesn't sound like the original, that magical, original, unique sound. The other really, really big error in Old Brown Shoe is the, the lead guitar part, it's double tracked. And what they did here, unfortunately, they made the mistake of, so for those of you who don't know, when you're recording, uh, if you're double tracking something like a guitar part, like you're playing the lead part, you play it the first time, and then you want to make it um, a bigger sound or like a, a thicker sound. So you, you play that exact same part again on a different track and you get a double tracked effect. And when you do that, sometimes you don't play it exactly right because you're a human being and you might play it just, you know, a little bit off. But as long as you have that original um, uh, recording on there that you did the guitar track, as long as you have that in there and that is louder than, than the overdub that has a little bit of a different sound to it, it'll sound good. And that's what happened with what George did on Old Brown Shoe. You can tell that he played the original lead, the, we'll call it the first lead, and then he overdubbed a second lead onto it. What they've done on this remix, this is my theory, is they have turned up the second overdub lead that he did on here, which isn't exactly perfect, and they've made that way louder than the original lead, so it doesn't sound as good, it sounds completely different, it doesn't sound strong like it does on the, on the original mix. That guitar is so great, it's like one of my favorite uh, George guitar parts ever, and it's totally ruined on this remix, uh, and just a big, big bummer for me. Um, let me know how you, how you feel about that, but it, it just, it, I can't believe that they let that go out. Um, but they did because it's in my hands and this is how it sounds. And it sounds the exact same way on the digital version that I listen to on streaming platforms. It's just kind of a mind blower. Um, and then let's see, all the other songs, uh, are then just the remixes that we have already gotten on the Super Deluxe Editions. But then there's the bonus songs, Now and Then. This is the new Beatles song. I haven't really talked about this. I'm going to make a dedicated video um, talking about the, uh, I bought two different pressings of Now and Then. I got the Target uh, exclusive single, which is the red vinyl, and then I got like the, uh, the just the UK Black 45 single. So I'll talk about my feelings about the song um, and just everything about that at a later time. But I will say I love it. Just leave it at that. Um, then you have Blackbird, which is not a remix. Um, okay, the new remixes on here are, it's just Hey Bulldog. It's, I wanna say I like it, but overall, I think it's another missed opportunity, much like Revolution, where uh, it's, there's nothing wrong with it necessarily, this new remix, it just doesn't have that umph to it. My favorite remix of Hey Bulldog is on the Yellow Submarine song track, uh, and I think that one sounds amazing. The bass on that is just so great. Everything about that is just electric and wonderful. On here, there's something missing, and there's also just some like weird kind of percussion stuff going on that, I don't know, it doesn't work for me uh, on this remix of Hey Bulldog. Just like I said, missed opportunity. So. Those are all the tracks on this box set uh, of the Red and the Blue albums. And uh, like I said, overall, I, don't, I didn't hate it, but I didn't really love 
I didn't really love it either. So it's kind of a, a, big, a big hit and miss for me, this box set. Um, I also wish they would have included a better booklet with this. They just included like the original, I guess they expanded the liner notes, but the original inserts that came with these albums um, when they released it in 2014, I think, when they did those re, the reissues of them. So they expanded those, but it, it's just a little, a single uh, sheet of paper that has some uh, text in there for the red and the blue. I wish they would have done a booklet. That would have been a lot nicer. Talking about the history of these albums, how they came to be made, because there's a very fascinating history uh, with how these were originally put out and all that kind of stuff. And then they could have talked about the remixes and you know how they went about it and all, all the usual stuff in the book that we all have come to love and the Beatles do so well. Uh, they didn't include that, and I think that's a bit of a bummer. Um, anyway, that being said, uh, let me know in the comments below what you think about these new remixes, about the overall package of the Red and the Blue albums, and uh, I'd love to know what you think in the comments. And uh, yeah, so that's my <laughs> review of the Red and the Blue albums. I'm sorry if maybe you were hoping I was going to be more enthusiastic about really enjoying it, but uh, I gotta be honest, and uh, my honest take on it is didn't love it and I didn't hate it. So anyway, that's it for now. Hope you're all doing well. More videos to come. Take care and bye for now.